Hi everyone, it's Elizabeth from Elpis Astrology at elpisastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. Um, so this is going to be my video for September 2024 uh, for the astrology and then later on in the video I will do your ascendance and or sun signs. I would say you should uh, watch and listen to both. So this is just a reminder for those folks that uh, are going to be in San Diego on Friday the 13th uh, of September. I will be giving a lecture on um, Mercury, Venus, and Mars retrogrades and what they mean in your own personal chart. Um, the lecture I will be giving will be around 7 p.m. at the San Diego Astrological Society. <clears throat> I'm going to put all the details below to where it's located, uh, but it's sort of central location in the Hillcrest area, if you know that. So uh, the kind of energies that are happening in September uh, really revolve around this uh, full moon eclipse that's going to be happening in Pisces mid-month. I'll get into the details in a minute. And then the other big thing is that Mars, except for the first few days of September, Mars will be in Cancer the, almost the whole month. Um, and I think that's going to set a big tone for us as well, especially on, uh, you know, the worldwide stage, probably related to politics. I'll get to that in a minute. But hey, we start off the month with the new moon in Virgo on the 2nd of September uh, at 6.57 p.m. And that's Pacific Daylight Time at 11 Virgo, four minutes. So we know a new moon has the moon and the sun together. So really, when we look at Virgo uh, as a sign, and then the new part of it being the new moon, we're really talking about here a new beginning in all things that are Virgo. This is service of some sort. This could be health, a new start uh, in our health. Um, it can also be a new start with regards to unearthing important information, right? Virgo is all about that too. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's a general theme with, with Virgo itself. So there's new starts in these areas. You have to look at what house uh, this falls in. And uh, in particular, if you do have something, say, around that, let's just say 10, 11, 12 degrees of Virgo. And if you do have your sun or your ascendant around those degrees, this is a whole new start to the year itself, right? The newness lasts for the whole birthday year for you. Um, so having said that, I do want to wish um, a happy birthday to all my clients and all my viewers, uh, but also to my brother Philip and uh, to my lovely husband Noah. Happy birthday. So let's get into the details of this new moon. We have a few things going on. Um, we've got a, and this is an ongoing sort of trend or, or theme, we've got Neptune kind of at the final degree uh, of Pisces, and then Pluto uh, at this time now will be at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And of course, this will be the last time in all of our lifetime that we will ever have Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Uh, once we get into mid-November time period, it will go, that's Pluto, completely into uh, Aquarius. But this sextile brings up a, an opportunity, really, to work uh, to inspire people to um, give us hope, that's that Neptune part. Um, and the Pluto part is uh, for powerful change, right? Or to see the truth. Uh, both Jupiter and Pluto can be involved in the truth, um, but Pluto in particular likes to reveal that. And with a sextile, it's a pleasant way. It gives you an opportunity to discover the truth, right? And so both these are at the anoretic degree, which is the 29 degree. So it's kind of bringing these, these energies to a head. But like I said, this is an ongoing theme. It's not just uh, at this new moon, but it is at this new moon too. We have Venus conjunct the south node. Um, so this says to me uh, that basically Venus is a big attractor. And I'm thinking that it, this Venus is attracting um, the opportunity to let go of some things. So I would say, generally speaking, at this new moon, um, it, it's giving us opportunities here to transform things, to be inspired by things, and most importantly, to maybe let go of some things as well. 
Now, like I said, um, Mars will be in Cancer most of the month, but at this new moon on the 2nd of September, it is still in Gemini. And so Mars and Gemini will be squaring Neptune in Pisces. And so here we're talking about um, challenges because it's a square. And I think something like this will certainly play out on the stage and probably in politics. And how is that going to be? Well, it's frustrations for sure. Um, and also potentially disruptions of some sort. But the Neptune part of that square uh, with Mars really brings in uh, deception, active deception going on here. And that's what this actually says, probably through things that are Gemini. So that's what, through any writing, through any communications, and this could include watching the news, for instance, or reading a newspaper or reading something or watching something on the internet. Um, but these are um, not pleasant interactions. These are meant to be deceptive, right? Now, we're going to have Jupiter having a wide square with Saturn. And this is also happening at this beginning of September. And I would say this is a difficult aspect. Um, I see in this particular instance, I see Jupiter representing the law and maybe literally laws because Jupiter is in uh, Gemini. Um, square Saturn, Saturn represents the rules and regulation. So to me, this says there's going to be some challenges coming here with regards to rules and regulations uh, and laws that exist. I'm not sure exactly how this will play out. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, this is challenging. This is challenging the existing laws. And again, I think this will play out on the world stage. Saturn can also represent karma. Um, and, and it can also represent time. So it may also, on a sort of generalized sense, um, somehow something starts coming forward that tells us that it's time, you know, that it's time maybe to make uh, some kind of adjustments with regards to rules and regulations that we are uh, living under. Now, the other thing is Saturn can literally represent structures or structure. And with Jupiter squaring it, it says to me, there could be a possibility here of some probably well-known structure uh, maybe coming down for some reason. Um, but this could also play out and be generalized to, you know, those in power, those holding on to the power have to release it. They're forced to release their power. Uh, Jupiter can also represent travel, international type affairs. So there could be also, again, playing out on the world stage, um, there could be uh, great difficulties to bring people together. I mean, we already know that's ongoing. I'm making this uh, towards um, just sort of the beginning of August time period. So lots will be playing out even before this particular transit happens, but it's not the first time this will, we'll have other times where we'll have Jupiter square Saturn too. So it really says there's gonna be some challenges, I think on the international stage uh, with regards to people in power at the moment, holding the, the rules and the regulations. Uh, we have Uranus, which will be um, uh, still, of course, in Taurus, and it will be uh, providing kind of a wide, I guess, uh, sextile with Neptune. And then, of course, trying to Pluto. I see this as an excellent aspect. So there could be some beneficial, favorable shakeups here with regards to, um, yeah, seeing the truth, uh, being inspired. Um, maybe spiritual aspects of ourselves. If you've got, say, something between the 27 degree and 29 degree uh, point um, with regards to, um, now we're looking at the signs here, uh, Taurus, uh, Capricorn, and um, Pisces. Um, there could be some very creative type of energy going on uh, where we're inspired to seek out the truth but they also, this also helps enlighten us. So I think this new moon is going to bring about some, I think, some dramatic new uh, pieces of information that help us all understand the truth of what's going on. 
Yeah, so generally speaking, I think it's a pretty good new moon, except for that Jupiter square Saturn. Um, but like I said, that's not the first time. It'll happen a couple other times too. All right, so when we move on to the 7th of September, we have Mercury square Uranus at 27 degrees. And so this really is, I would say, let me just see where Mercury, uh, where it actually is in the, um, yeah, so that will be, Mercury will be in Leo. So, you know, Mercury in Leo, this is a flamboyant type energy, an energy of wanting to have fun. And so at its best, um, it could be just opportunities to enjoy ourselves during the summer months. But the square really says it's upsetting. And again, this is probably going to be on the world stage, upsetting information that comes to light. Um, and if we look at Leo, uh, Leo can represent literally kings and queens. Um, so we could have some announcements from any sort of monarchy or equivalent um, that's maybe surprising. And it's like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Um, but it also can have something to do with children. Um, so there may be some, some kind of news with regards to children here um, that shakes us up. Um, and or provides enlightenment, but, but it's something we're going to have to, um, you know, it's going to be challenges. We're going to have to actually work with this energy. Yeah. All right, so when we look at the couple next days after that, the 8th and 9th of September, we have um, the sun will be in Virgo, and it will be sextiling Saturn in Pisces beautiful setup. This is taking important information and having the opportunity to make something of it, to make it real. And so, you know, the sun is the most important luminary uh, in the chart that you look at. So I would say this is a positive influence of facts that are important for us to know to come to light. That's what I would say that 8th, 9th September is. All right, let's move on to the full moon eclipse in Pisces. Let's get the details down, uh, and then I'm going to talk about what I think this means and what it initiates. So on the 17th of September, at 7.33 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, we will have this full moon eclipse at 25 degrees of Pisces and 40 minutes. Now, I did make a video about this eclipse. Um, I put the links below. I would suggest that you look at it. I'm going to give a lot more detail in my video than I am going to here. But I really feel that, especially if you've got, say, something around the 25 degree mark uh, of Pisces and or 25 of Virgo. I mean, we can take other signs too, but I, for real effects, I look at conjunctions and oppositions, to be honest. Uh, doesn't mean there can't be other effects there too. But I would say that if you do have something like this personally, these degree points, this pay attention to what comes up. It doesn't have to be something bad or unpleasant, but do pay attention to what comes up here because this is going to indicate the areas and or the themes that will carry through um, a little more clearly once we have the north nodes of the moon go into Pisces, which will be mid-January 2025. I've made a video about this too. Links below suggest that you look at it, especially if you've got, say, you're going to have your north nodal return uh, happen at this time. That video will give you a lot more details. Um, so the other thing that's going to happen is, is that next year in 2025, in September, you are also going to have sort of a compatible or a companion um, eclipse, and it's going to be in Virgo, though, at 24 degrees. So whatever turns up here, especially if you've got the degree points that I've mentioned highlighted in your chart somehow, um, there's going to be more meaning played out for that. Now, when we talk about the North Nodes going into Pisces mid-January 2025, um, we know that for the next 18 months from mid-January onwards, we're going to have the North Nodes in Pisces, a big change right? 
Now, this full moon eclipse um, has the moon conjunct Neptune. And so I would say that, you know, the moon conjunct Neptune, and then, of course, we're going to have um, the sun will have that in an opposition, right? Just that setup alone is not necessarily um, something I'm going to have a big party about or be happy about. Because I think that whole Neptune thing, again, is going to be bringing in so much deception. Um, and although it's a full moon eclipse, you know, this, these eclipses can bring in both new beginnings and endings. We like to talk about full moons as being endings or big, you know, uh, spotlights put on an area of our lives. Um, and indeed, that probably will happen. Um, the other thing that happens is that we have Venus uh, will be opposite Chiron. So Venus will be in Libra. Uh, that's the sign it rules. And Libra can represent the law at this time. I think, my personal feeling is, again, this is going to play out on the world stage. And I think it's going to be some kind of big legal um, announcement of some, some big legal spotlight put on something, and I think it's going to be on deception. I don't think it's going to be the higher aspects of Neptune, which is the, um, you know, spirituality and, you know, agape love. Um, although, you know, it doesn't mean it can't, especially if you've got something like this in your chart. This could be a monumental time for you to develop your spirituality. But on the world stage, um, I see this as um, deception being brought to light big time with the eclipse. And then this, of course, whatever comes up at this time on the world stage, will be played out in more detail once we get the North Nodes going into Pisces for 18 months, starting in mid-January 2025. With the Venus um, opposite Chiron, um, you know, Venus is an attractor. It likes to soften things. You know, it likes to make things sweet. So I think opposite Chiron, it's going to sweeten this um, full moon eclipse effects in the sense that it's going to make you feel a little bit better with regards to whatever comes up at this time. And again, this I think is going to play out with regards to the law of some sort or laws of some sort. It could pertain to women as well. Um, and it could also, you know, pertain to a specific woman, um, a specific woman that brings great healing, you know, on the world stage. Um, let me just see where Venus is at so my viewers will know. So Venus is at almost 24 degrees at this full moon. Um, so if you do have something around that, there could be some big healing uh, energy put in for you on an individual level. But like I said, a world stage, I think this is going to be bringing to light some legal matter of some sort. Um, but I think, even though it's an opposition... Um, will bring in some kind of healing to uh, us on the world uh, stage kind of axis. All right, so let's move on to the next day. That's going to be the 18th. So this, this effect that I'm going to talk about next is really going to be in operation also at the full moon. So this is uh, Mercury in Virgo, uh, sextiling Saturn. Or actually, you know what? Mercury in Virgo is going to be opposing Saturn uh, in Pisces. And so this is um, some hard facts come to light here that um, those in power, those that, you know, either initiate or develop, um, you know, legal type stuff, uh, especially rules and regulations and laws, um, there's going to be some challenges here where, you know, there's going to be some information put forward that challenges uh, what's going on here. And I'm thinking, although the Supreme Court technically will not be back in session till early October, um, and I think it may be around the 7th of October as opposed to the, the 2nd, but I'm not sure. Maybe they'll come back early. Um, I think it's like the, the first Wednesday or something in October they come back. But I, I'm just getting intuitively that this is the Supreme Court. And there's some challenges with regards to important information coming up. So that, that comes from Mercury information 
and then um, the Virgo part, which of course is um, important information, right? Um, when we look at 22nd of September, we have that sun at 29 degrees of Virgo, trining Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Well, this is awesome. Truly, truly awesome. And so this is, this is powerful people. Uh, the sun, generally speaking, has always been looked at as men working together. Like, right, we've got that trine. And so I would say there's going to be some monumental um, conclusion that comes as a result of um, people, probably men, certainly people of power, working together to transform um, transform things, you know? Yeah, that's a very powerful aspect, that 22nd of September. And if you do have something, say, around the 29 degree of either Virgo and or Pluto, this could be a very favorable day for you to win um, to win the attention of maybe those in power above you. It can also be a time of great truths being shown to you, but in a good way, right? And some people may come into power at this time. I mean, I don't think there's anything due right now around the 22nd of September, um, but there could be somewhere in the world something like that happens too. All right, the next day on the 23rd of September, we have Venus now at 29 degrees of Libra, squaring Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. So on the heels of this positive energy on the 22nd, uh, we then come bump into, um, and this is the law, there's going to be some kind of thing that comes up around the 23rd of September that um, is going to probably cause some people con some consternation and unhappiness. Uh, and I think this is, you know, um, Lady Liberty, the law, um, probably decreeing something, saying this is the way it is. I'm, I'm, I'm putting down my uh, gavel here and telling you this is what's going to happen. Um, but it's not going to be something people are going to want to accept right away. It's going to be challenging. Now, on the 25th of September, we have Mercury at 27 degrees of Virgo, nicely trining Uranus at 27 degrees of, of Taurus. And so this is awesome energy. So sandwiched in between <laughs> um, that kind of not so great Venus square Pluto uh, transit, we've got two very nice transits, right? And so this Mercury, I say, represents important information. The trine says it's positive, favorable energy. And Uranus just says it's unexpected. So maybe as a result of something negative happening and powerful happening on the 23rd of September, by the time we leave it for a few days until the 25th, that turns around and important information comes in unexpectedly in a very positive way, right? So that's how I think this may play out, uh, that 23rd to 25th. It seems maybe something's insurmountable, then you leave it and a couple days later, boom it all gets resolved unexpectedly. On the 28th and 29th of September, uh, we have Venus squaring the North Nodes. And so this is just us, uh, generally speaking. And I, I put this back to both women, and I put it back to um, money markets, uh, or money, generally speaking, has some challenges here with regards to their future. You know, there's issues brought up 28th, 29th September around these things that affect our, our future that we need to work on, you know, that we need to put some effort into to make them right. On the 30th of September, we have Mars uh, in Cancer trining Saturn in Pisces. Well, what a beautiful way to end September. Um, now, I think this whole Mars in Cancer really represents, especially if I generalize it to the USA, which is a cancer country, it really speaks to, I think, um, some positive new rules and regulations, positive new structure that is put in place uh, in the country itself. Um, the thing is about Mars and cancer, it's, it's not really compatible with cancer in the sense of cancer likes to have everything 
um, cozy and comfortable, safe and secure. And Mars represents, um, literally can represent the military, aggression, assertion, um, just energy, right? Moving forward, let's get on with this type of energy. Um, so there may be just a big push here to put some new structure in place and these may be things like rules and regulations uh, in the US for some reason at the end of September. Um, but we're also gonna have at this time, Mercury conjunct the sun in um, Libra at the end of September, but it also goes into that first day of October too. And so this says to me, some kind of conclusion of some sort regarding, I would say here again, because both of these are in Libra. I'm, I'm translating this as the law. So some wrap up's gonna happen and it's gonna be announced uh, regarding some maybe legal case. And there's a lot of them out there, certainly in the USA uh, with one person <laughs> notably. Okay, I think that I just wanna go back to this whole um, Mars in Cancer, which is the first few days of September Mars will be in Gemini, but then you can look at Mars in Cancer for the rest of the month. And to me, this just, I can just bring up a general energy of um, assertiveness and aggressiveness in the home. And so I would just say, especially if you've got, say, something yourself, say you've got your own Mars here or some other planet, um, I would say just, you know, take a breath. <laughs> Uh, in and out before you react to something, right? But I think generally in the USA, there's going to be a lot of argumentative type and aggressive type energy. Now, this could play out as military too. I don't intuitively think it is, but there is that possibility that the military will have to come in for some reason. Um, and maybe that's going to be around the eclipse time period or just before that, right? But generally speaking, it does speak to aggression, frustration in the home, um, in the country, in your homeland, right? Um, and it can refer to, you know, safety and security, where you feel you have to protect yourself. All right. I'm just going to talk a, a tiny bit about um, J.D. Vance. Um, I'm not going to go into details about all his, his chart. Um, but he has some pretty serious things in his astrology coming up. And he's not alone. It's going to be in his generation too. Um, but I think in particular, um, he's got this Jupiter, transiting Jupiter right now is in Gemini and it's in his 10th house. And, you know, I always talk about, generally speaking, Jupiter is a positive influence and indeed it is. But you can twist this energy as well. And you have to be careful about bragging and exaggerating especially in your career. And so this is something that could be ongoing for him. Um, basically, um, you know, all the time that Jupiter is in Gemini, because that's mostly his 10th house. But the other big thing he's got coming up here is, uh, from September to mid-November, is he's got transiting Pluto squaring his natal Pluto. And it, it doesn't mean this is the end of the world for this type of transit, but it is very challenging. And it's power challenging power, right? So it's like your power is being challenged. Um, and his Pluto, so that Pluto falls, the transiting Pluto uh, falls in his sixth house. Um, but his Pluto is in the third house. And so I would take great care with any kind of communications, right? Um, whatever you do day to day, that's the sixth house. That's where transiting Pluto will be in his chart. Squares his Pluto in his third house. So this says to me, take great care with regards to any kind of communications, even your thoughts, um, because all these could come up for some big challenges uh, right up to mid-November 2024 for him. Um, he also has um, transiting Uranus, squaring his um, natal Venus um, and natal Ascendant and an opposition to his natal Mars in the fourth house. And again, these are squares, right? Um, Uranus is upsets. So there's gonna be upsets for him in his career. So right now, Uranus, transiting Uranus is in his 10th house. 
and it's not far off his midheaven. And so I think, again, prepare yourself for unexpected changes coming your way. And this effect lasts for a long time. Um, I mean, if we look at, let's just look at the full moon where Uranus, uh, what degree point it's at, it's at 27 degrees, but it's going retrograde and it does go back to 23 degrees. Well, his midheaven uh, is at 22 degrees. So he's due to probably have some ongoing shakeups that'll be, you know, viewed by everybody. Uh, ongoing shakeups to his reputation, um, to his career because it's in the 10th house and, um, you know, his social standing. All right, well, I just wanted to cover for those that were interested in it. And, the, you know, I, I'm, I'm gonna just end there. Um, we can talk about more of it on comments if you wanna say anything, but some people are interested in this, some people are not, and I'm fine, I'm fine either way. So when we take a quick peek at October, 2024, we have another eclipse happening. Um, but this time, it's going to be on the 2nd of October, um, and it will be in Libra. We're also going, and it'll be a new moon. We're going to have a full moon in Aries in October, and Pluto will continue its stay at 29 degrees of Capricorn. All right, let's move on to look at your uh, sun sign and or ascendant. I say uh, watch or listen to both. And I also want to say a, a big hello to um, all my Spotify and audio listeners as well. I appreciate all your um, listening. So let's look first of all, because this is an, our new moon this month in September in Virgo, we're going to start off with you, Virgo. So we know that this new moon in Virgo is in your first house. So this is all about you, right? A new start for you of some sort. And certainly if you have something around 10, 11, 12 degrees of Virgo, whether it's your ascendant uh, and or uh, your sun, this is a whole new start for this year, right? So look, I'm making this uh, video um, just sort of at the beginning of August. And so if you're listening to it around that time, think about maybe what new starts you want to make in your health, uh, perhaps your day-to-day -day, um, job. If you don't work, um, what do you do day-to-day? -day? Is there some new start that you want to make here? Um, is there some area of service where maybe you want to start? Maybe you're going to, some of you will um, initiate um, volunteering for a charity of some sort. Um, certainly, uh, Virgo is all about service. It can have everything to do with health as well, but it's also small animals. And so there may be some Virgos that decide to get um, a very nice little small animal at this time of the new moon. Now, when we look at that full moon eclipse in Pisces, well, that's opposite your sign and involves the seventh house. And the seventh house, we pretty well all agree that it is to do with the other. Typically, the other is our marriage partner. Um, it can be business partners and it can be clients, but it really is any other. It's like you are here and then you're looking at the seventh house. It's all those people that are over there, right? I hope that gives you a little visual of what I'm talking about. And so it really says that there may be some, um, something big that happens with regards to your partner, um, business partner or marriage partner. Um, it could be a time of clients. Maybe some client comes to light for some reason for you. But whatever comes up around this time period in terms of a theme, I would say that the theme will also be more obvious um, and come more into relief for you starting mid-January 2025 uh, for the next 18 months after that. And there's a compatible eclipse with this that happens in September 2025, but it is in a full moon in Virgo. And so I would say that pay attention to what comes up with the other, uh, because that will come, will be a theme for 18 months or so uh, once we get the North Nodes going into Pisces itself 
and then there'll be some other thing that comes up September 2025 related to this eclipse as well, but it will be in your sign Virgo. So maybe something that happens to your partner this year, this um, September 2024, um, will then somehow shift around and the focus will be on you uh, next year in September, but that they're both kind of linked together. And sometimes it's difficult to figure out what this is, um, but it's always fun to entertain the ideas of what it could be, right? Now, you also have both Neptune and Saturn uh, in Pisces, right? Hovering around this eclipse as well. Now, it doesn't, <clears throat> it's only really um, Neptune. Uh, Saturn's a little bit far away from the eclipse, but Neptune's pretty darn close to it. Um, so at its best, I would say that there could be some very deep emotions of some sort that come up for you that have a very inspirational, spiritual type of energy around them. Yeah, inspiration could be big for you here, Virgo, uh, but the inspiration could come from the other, right? And I'm thinking probably more than likely your marriage partner uh, and or business partnerships, or like I said, clients as well. Um, yeah. So enjoy that new moon and the new start to your life, Virgo. Bye for now. All right, folks, that wraps up um, my astrology for September 2024. Um, I hope everybody is enjoying their summer and having some fun out there. If you are not having fun, get that calendar out and uh, start marking some days where you are going to have some fun. That's important. We all work very hard and I think it's important to take breaks too, right? But I'm sending everybody lots of love, um, lots of inspiration for great things to happen in September for you. And we will see you again in October. Bye for now. So I'd just like to remind all my viewers and clients of my services. You can find them on my website, of course, and all the details of that are below. Um, but I do a, um, a tarot combo astrology reading for $50. It is a pre, it's my only pre-recorded one, unless specifically a client asks for me to pre-record a Zoom call for them. Uh, but I do other things too. I can do your, um, just your transits and progress chart for this birthday year uh, as an option. I can do a full-on horoscope look at all your astrology, including an in-depth analysis of your natal astrology and then progress charts, and then all the transits on top of that. I can do that as well. So check me out. As I said, I've got all my details below. Send me an email with your birth details and a question or area of life that you're interested in me focusing on. I do do a Zoom video, whether it's pre-recorded or live, with you to go over all these details.